Hello everyone. Welcome back to Resident Evil 7. I don't know why, but my visuals, like, work now. Um, I hope this recording goes okay and isn't arbitrarily dark, but it looks like OBS is actually finally, like, recording what I see. Oh, I should check the map first. So, uh, let's see. I apologize. My commentary yesterday wasn't <laughs> wasn't really my best effort. Uh, I found it uh, a little bit difficult to focus, and I'm not sure why. Oh, that's good. Bob, my mom. Lock. Oh, unlocked. That's good. Um. Captain's cabin is fourth floor. I kind of do want to go back up there just to grab that last gun, just in case. Can I get there from here? I can. Maybe. I can't. I'm a fool. I might be able to climb through the elevator shaft. We'll see. Yeah, I found it a little bit difficult to focus yesterday, and I'm not totally sure why. Right. Acid. Okay, let's go up to Captain's Cabin again real quick. And we'll come back down here after. I was thinking a little bit more about the uh, the southern setting. And I feel like I er, early in the playthrough, in, in maybe the very first video, I talked a little bit about how um, southern gothic kind of distinguished itself as its own kind of thing. Um, and I, I haven't really returned to that yet, so I thought I, I probably should. I should maybe explore that topic a little bit further. Um, so why, I guess, is the South so suited uh, for this topic? Uh, or, or for this, this sort of thing? Oh, hello? Nice dodge, dude. And another bomb, thank you. And I think... Oh yeah, it, auto, it actually auto-dropped the key. That's kind of nice. Uh, what are you? Enhanced handgun ammo. I don't know if I care that much. Can't make any more bullets for the time being. And I might as well heal, though. So, when you think about where, like, where does the gothic genre come from, um, and what are kind of its chief features, I think something that's really important to think about is this concept of decadence, and like, what is decadence, and it, decadence is kind of this, or, or does have this relationship with decay, rather literally, like, that's where... Oh. Decay and decadence sort of come from each other, like this idea of this like period of excess that comes from this like uh, gluttony that is is destructive and uh, I don't know, sort sort of bad in some capacity. It is the no notion of decadence? It's it's literally like the period of um, excess that is actually sort of corrosive. Uh, no pun intended. As I melt a, a lock open. Um, it's this observation that kind of was uh, of interest pertaining to uh, hmm. where's oh, where's my mower? Okay, yeah, they reused some textures. Um, It was, it was a topic that was especially of interest, kind of thinking um, back on the Romans and the Greeks. Like, these are ideas that sort of show up in, in European retrospectives on 
on those periods. Uh, but but I think that it was really, really relevant to a reflection on, on a particular moment that was happening kind of as the feudal slash mercantile era was sort of starting to transition towards uh, what we now call capitalism. Um, you, you do also get this... Oh, oh big guy. Um, bombs, please. Hello. Gross. Come in. Come in the room. Get back up. Are you dead yet? Yes. Oh, oh, you blow up when you die. Oops. Um, well, ooh, perfect. We need this for the uh, elevator. But, uh, so early 1700s, you kind of get the, oh, I don't have enough space. Hmm. Uh, thank you. That should probably be enough. Thank you. Um, early 1700s, you kind of get the earliest form of, uh, what is now called the industrial revolution. Um, early 1700s, you get a bunch of these like mechanical innovations stemming from uh, increased availability of resources from sort of the golden age of exploration, AKA the birth of colonialism, uh, 1500s, 1600s. Um, and the uh, availability of resources combined with some new technical know-how results in, uh, for the first time in, in quite a long time, can I not go this way? Huh. Maybe not. Maybe this is... Maybe this just exists as space to fight the, the big guy. But anyway, um, for, for the first time maybe in, in human history, you're, you're seeing a pretty massive change of status quo because basically as long as civilization has existed, um, things uh, th there were certain regularities of, of the the feudal world that uh hadn't changed that dramatically like there, there are certainly variations upon a theme but uh a lot of this stuff wasn't changing that much okay you okay so we need a fuse still I presume the fuse has to be on this floor. There's a guy wandering around, I think, so we should watch out for him. Nope, no fuse. Have we already been in here? Did we come here? Recreation room is maybe what we need to do. I might as well save, though. Uh, throughout most of human history, you get this motif of powerful individuals, huge, huge number of farmers. Um, powerful individuals at the top. Uh, farmers support them. Farmers get drawn from for the army. I don't like you, Jumper. I don't have a shotgun to blow your head off real easy. You good? You done? Good. But, uh, yeah, the, the, the methods of organization or whatever maybe change a little bit, but, you know, th things aren't really that different for the average person living maybe in ancient Greece versus a person living in, uh, that's good.
ancient Greece versus like, I don't know, Germany in the year 1000 or like, uh, I don't know, England in the year 1400 or something. Uh, you know, for, for, for a lot of people, things don't really change much, if at all. Uh, herb, that's nice. Uh, I could make another heal. Well, I can't make any more bullets right now. Um, I, could, I guess I could make strong handgun ammo, because our, our handgun ammo isn't very good to begin with. And that's it for now. So yeah, uh, stuff kind of stays the same, but the Industrial Revolution kind of changes that in a, in a way that we, we hadn't really ever seen. Hmm. Where do we need to go? Where do we get a fuse, I guess is the question. Let's go back around to the elevator and see if we can find that. This is not where the elevator would be. Oh, general purpose fuse. Uh, I don't want to deal with him, so let's go a different way. Industrial Revolution changes this um, for the first time. I mean, like, cities had always been super important and had been uh, a major thing worldwide. Uh, can I... I can climb up. Perfect. Cities had always been certainly big and important. They are certainly where there's a, a big concentration of power. Uh... No, I don't want to go to 1, I want to go to S2. Go to basement. No. There we go. But, like, the Industrial Revolution is drawing people to cities because that's actually where, like, productivity is happening. That's where, like, I don't know, like, it, it's, it's a different thing quite from any other moment in history. Like, even when you think about the really powerful cities throughout history, whether it's uh, Babylon or... Hmm. Sorry. Just making sure there are no enemies around. There's a guy above. That was a mistake on my part. Put the bombs away right before the guy shows up. Might as well just keep running. It's viable. Nice. Damn. Didn't expect that to work out so well. Uh... More handgun ammo, which I didn't really want, but whatever. More handgun ammo. Machine gun ammo, that's more what I was looking for. Oh, and bombs. Thank you. Oh, hi. There we go. But, anyway, all of these diffusions of power uh, all throughout. Okay. Come on, buddy. You dead? Yes. All, all of the diffusions of power which had been... Oh, sort of... Ow! Stop it. Oh. 
Made that mistake twice in a row. Uh, but, like, all, all throughout history you have these diffusions of power, right? Where, like, people in the centers of power grant land to uh, other people in these outlying places with, with, oh, nice, with understandings that there's, there's some amount of control in place or some amount of, like, fealty, you know, like, Centralized power gives land to uh, these outlying dukes and uh, earls and and these kinds of things, with with, with the purpose of, of controlling that land by way of them. Um, suddenly, these people don't really have nearly as much power because that land doesn't matter nearly as much as it once did. Um, the the power is is more centralized to cities than it ever had been in the past. So. You get these like enormously rich people, these earls, these dukes, these people out in their their little kingdoms, um, their their little plots of land, out in the middle of nowhere, um, who's who suddenly are, are kind of rich and kind of not, and this kind of becomes the inspiration for um, for the gothic genre. It's, it's like it does become this period of decay because they're so used to all this power, but like the power is kind of fading, but they still technically own the land and stuff. That stuff is falling into disrepair. You, you even get this a little bit into like, for anyone who's seen like Upton Ab, up, down, no, it's Downton Abbey, Upton, Upton Abbey is a parody of it, I guess. Downton Abbey, Downton Abbey, it's kind of this idea, like they're the super rich family, but they actually kind of don't have money, which is weird. Um... But that's kind of the inspiration for the gothic genre, and uh, the South lends itself to that story really well. And we'll, we'll talk about that in just a moment, right after we do this. Ethan. 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 I'm not gonna hurt you. Hell, I never would have if I could have helped you. What do you mean? I'm no killer, son. Neither is Marguerite, nor my boy Lucas, or even Zoe here. That girl, Evelyn, she did this. What the hell is she? Now, what did she do to you? She infected us with her gift. That's what she calls it. I found her near yeah, a busted out tank in the bayou. Everything changed after that. So she infects you and then she takes control? No. Not exactly, son. She just... She forces her way into your mind, your soul. I can't fight that. You are connected to her, and you can't resist the urge to. Oh, you're a, you're a different person after that, just like Mia. So Mia sent me that message because of Evelyn. Listen, uh, the girl just wants a family of her own. She's the key. You find her, you stop her. Ethan. Free my family. Please. Evelyn, stay away from him. Why? He doesn't love you. Remember?
So, that whole scene with uh, with Jack and Zoe, this it has been much discussed among people. Like the the common, a common read of that situation is that it's it's maybe some kind of like hive mind space, like some kind of like uh, some kind of just all psychic space that like we're, we're still connected to Jack and to Zoe um, by way of the mycelium. Uh, which is kind of an interesting idea, um, which is also why you can like hallucinate Evelyn anywhere, because uh, you're you're always sort of connected into this thing, and this would imply that like Z we know Zoe is still alive, or we think Zoe is still alive. This would also imply that Jack is still alive, if that was happening in that moment. Uh, I actually think though that that it's a maybe more ambiguous circumstance than than people often talk about like i think it's possible actually that uh it's possible that you just dreamed that i think it's also possible i mean it's it's possible that maybe that could have been implanted by evelyn and she's like trying to get sympathy like jack saying like oh she just you know she just wants a family like that could just be evelyn lying to us um like this could be the act of ethan partly being taken over and i think there's actually a lot of evidence that it, ethan has to be infected like that's just like unambiguous to me like the uh the whole thing with with his hand like actually connect reconnecting and working i think stems from the fact that like he is infected and he is getting um he is getting the mold healing um and he's also hallucinating her which indicates that he is infected uh, etc so like it's possible that this is one of evelyn's methods of like trying to get into your head like we might have just witnessed the thing it, it's like in in inception um in the second layer of the dream when Cobb is like you're dreaming like i'm here to protect you from people who are invading your dream um like she might have been doing that through a presentation of jack trying to like I'll, I'll, you know. Okay, you little bitch. Where the fuck are you? Uh, I think it's also interesting, though. When, when I first watched this, um, by way of other Let's Players, I do want to mention. I thought that this was actually a flashback, and I thought that Ethan was maybe remembering something that he had experienced while like delirious, or like while he was like semi passed out. And he had just forgotten until this moment, and that that might that scene might have taken place between his getting captured um, in the guest house and him being dragged to dinner uh, with the family, because you do get this like really brief flash of him in a chair with his hand being reassembled or his hand being stapled back on, and I'm not positive, but I think it's Zoe who is stapling his hand back on and Zoe's obviously in that scene. So I kind of wonder if the family was trying to get through to him before he had completely awoken or like when they had a moment of lucidity, even if Ethan wasn't totally awake, they will like try to communicate with him before they dragged him over to the table and they like went crazy again themselves. I don't know. Um, I, I th Maybe there's some canon explanation that I need to look into a little bit more, but I, I think... All of these interpretations are, are valid. Anyway, back to the Southern Gothic. Um, what do we have here? 
some kind of room with a hard hat and some big old tanks. Uh, aha. It's all your fault, the wall says. That's rude. In mold. The South, I think, works for this because in a lot of ways, um, the South maybe was the most pure vestiges of uh, of old Europe in America, particularly when you have these like these massive plantations, uh, you know, entirely fueled by slave labor. Um, those are like the closest things you get to these like little fiefdoms, and uh, you know, little little uh, feudal. dead fish huh oh helicopter um like the 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 the, f the feudal world that europe um had been moving away from sort of existed in the south for a little bit it existed maybe i mean like it existed more in the south than it did anywhere outside the south at least um Can I just climb up, or is there a ladder? I gotta. Oh, there is a ladder. I see it through there. Uh, the South was that place more so than anywhere else in the U.S. Like you certainly have some old money and some stuff similar up north, and like on the frontiers, you get moments of, of these kinds of things happening. But like, um, the South very much had a um, maybe a continental vibe that what do we have here south south dolvi parnaby salt mine co abercrombie salt mine south dolvi um that definitely says parnaby not abercrombie but whatever uh f february 18th 1892 there's a collapse in the patterson mine tuon and beckford are dead and huxley will never walk on his own again old man stan was right the ground here is too unstable February 19, so one day later, 1892. The company's not going to send us any replacements. They want us to work double shifts instead. I can't wait to get back to the old country. <laughs> Speak of the devil. Talking about uh, old country vestiges in the south. Um, so in, in the antebellum south in particular, though, um, yeah, you, you have these like massive plantation estates that are, are closer to what we think of as being like the south. Uh, or, or, or rather, more, more similar to being like what we think of as uh, as Europe, certainly than than anything you might uh, see elsewhere in the north. We have a photo of a helicopter. Are they watching us from that helicopter? Um, and when I, I guess when. The Civil War happened, and you entered into this Reconstruction period in the South. Decay, decadence, again, like these ultra-rich families who, like, no longer can sustain um, these systems that they had been accustomed to because of slavery. Um, that fits. It fits the South. Alpha-1, this is Bravo-1. Do you read? This is Alpha-1. Report. Did you find anything? A thorough search of the Baker property revealed zero survivors. Zero survivors. We did find evidence of a skirmish. Evelyn? Negative. However, we did find several encrypted messages from the Baker's son, Lucas, to an unknown third party. You can probably guess who that was. That's just great. We've had reports using the abandoned mine south of the property. I'm gonna go have a look. Roger that. We'll meet you at those coordinates. If you encounter Evelyn, orders are shoot to kill. Repeat, shoot to kill. Alrighty. So yeah, the the, um, the the South kind of becomes this perfect um, corollary for for like old continental Europe. Uh, 
we need this, I presume. So I'm going to put that down there. And the, the south being this... The, the south just becomes this, like, um, convenient, I guess, stand-in. It's this place that um, very much... Is there anything we want? I kind of want the bombs. Don't want the machine gun, really. I could take a little more enhanced handgun ammo. Don't need more regular handgun ammo, though. I think we're probably good. We have a lot of antique coins. Now, I, I missed quite a few of them, though, because we need, like, five more to unlock the last thing. So we did definitely missed them. That's the magnum I mentioned. It's not that useful. So for the sake of it, uh, yeah, we see that the, the ship crashed near enough to the old mine um, that there's this connection back to the Baker estate. And then real quick, let's also uh, you let's move over. Uh, I'll probably switch I'll switch um, the knife to the bombs at some point soonish. What time is it? I think we might call it for tonight, everybody. This has been a fun session. I would love to keep talking, but I guess maybe just to, to finish up the point, um, the South, so much like uh, continental Europe, was this place of like incredible wealth and incredible splendor and incredible excess um, when you think about these uh, enormous plantation estates and the, the southern bells and their giant gowns and all that. Um, not, not dissimilar to uh, certain locations in Europe. Um, so the, the period of decay they would enter into thereafter I think certainly lent itself to it. And there is something untamed about the south that I think uh, sort of was true also in parts of, of Europe, the more impassable parts of the mountains. You know, when you think about like uh, whether it's the Balkans or, or some of the I don't know, mysterious uh, black forest zones of Germany or um, e even uh, some of the, the swampier bits that you get in, uh, I don't know, like parts of northern Italy or something. Um, this untamedness, this old wood growth, um, old wood growth as well in like fairy forests of Ireland or something. Um, all of these are maybe... They, they feel more connected to the South. So it, it lent itself to that. Um, and, and you get this uh, equivalent, certainly first in, in fiction and then eventually in film, uh, where a lot of the, the motifs and, and concepts that you see in, in the Gothic fiction of Europe uh, extend themselves to the American South. Uh, one really interesting theme for the sake of mentioning it that... Uh, I'm not the expert on the Southern Gothic genre, but I do think that one thing that um, strikes me shows up in a lot of Southern Gothic stories, like things that you see from uh, like Flannery O'Connor, that kind of thing, um, is the idea of the mysterious stranger showing up and sort of upsetting uh, a normal household, I guess, um, is, is very much the structure of this game. Um, but, you know, that, that's a, a good enough point for us to leave off on because uh, next session we'll be finishing up the game and uh, this has been a, a fun ride. Uh, we'll, we'll reflect a little bit more on the, the game in general when, uh, when we close up next session. But uh, it's been a good one. So thanks so much for watching, everyone. Uh, we'll see you next time.